Right, uh, welcome back after the blackout. But I'd like to take you back to Dennis Aseto. Dennis, who suffered some setback due to the blackout. Aseto, summarize what the professionals are saying. And yes, indeed, time. even the Bible says, uh, pray and there is light at the end of the tunnel. That is where we are. There is light. We thank God for that. And just before that technical hitch, uh, the men in academia had touched on matters to do with uh, the importance of the matters climate change be included in the curriculum, that we need to take this information down to the people, that we need to make sure that those at the grassroots get to understand the effects of climate change. And Ken, as you sit up there, what are the leaders saying, the researchers and professors on this conversation being taken down to the people, Ken? Agriculture would have been very important, but I hear there are also lessons on climate change right now at the level of uh, the university, and uh, Masila Muliro is taking a lead on that, being a science and technology institution. Thank you so much, Aseto. Aseto will be back at the top of the hour with all the top stories making your headlines today. But uh, let me bring this conversation back to my panelists, and uh, we apologize for that also. Let me begin with Judith. Judith, there must be ways that... Uh, the communities and the people around have adopted to in order to mitigate this because it's a reality like we were told it's a reality so what are some of the things that from the ground they're doing to ensure that at least they mitigate the effects of climate change which is a reality thank you ken um there are initiatives by communities and organizations to make sure that the communities are adapting to the effects of climate change. I will be speaking to such initiatives uh, focusing on uh, making agriculture more sustainable. And I would like to start by talking about one that I promote and I practice, regenerative agriculture, where we are promoting minimal use of uh, chemical fertilizers, embracing more of organic inputs, which are now readily available, and looking into integrated pest management, uh, reducing use of herbicides that would have destroyed um, uh, insects that are friendly to us as farmers and destroy biodiversity as that. Uh, embracing agroforestry where we are now cropping using and also planting trees on our farms. We know that our land sizes have shrinked and so we are also promoting the re uh, reduction of monoculture and promoting a lot of crop biodiversity on farms. And we have sustainable ways of doing that. And such include uh, doing what we are calling relay cropping. We are also promoting high value crops. And in this region, we are looking at African leafy vegetables. I'm sure the audience and also the people at home are now seeing managu and terere and mtere on the supermarket shelves, dried, and that is a value addition. And also looking at um, promoting practices such as cover cropping so that our soils are covered all through the year and that uh, we are not exposing our soils and losing uh, the carbon and losing the moisture from the soils. So, so those are some the, of the practices that we are doing. And also, we are promoting appropriate technologies that the communities can identify with and they can easily do, uh, such as uh, organic composting. And this, we also promote technologies such as black soldier flies. I know that um, uh, we have a lot of organic waste and black soldier flies are doing a very good job in ensuring that the communities are getting food or feed, animal feed, and they are also getting um, organic fertilizer from that. And this just uh, examples, but we have much more that the communities are doing. What I like 
with the examples you're giving are very basic examples that can be practiced with any common person. I don't know where I'll get the flies, but <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll come, I I'll come back to you. I am just telling you what <laughs> everyone what can do to do, get yes, there. The ground, yeah. But don't forget use of renewable energy, okay. uh, solar, solar and, and biogas or biodigesters. Because with biodigesters, we get bioslurry, which is a rich organic fertilizer and mm. we also get energy from it okay. for solar we get lighting that is super and we also get energy to run simple farm equipment irrigation kits uh, you can also run your chaff cutters and such kind of um, machinery okay. at home yeah thank you all right quite a lot dr otichilo um forget about the policy level and come back to the ground with us. Is it possible to live with this? Is it possible to live with climate change? Thank and what you. is it that we can do to live with climate change? Yes, climate change is here with us. It's not going to go away for many years to come. And therefore, we must learn to live with climate change. And that's why adaptation is a key focus at the discussion level, at the global level too. Because we have to learn how to adapt to live to climate change. And as Madam has clearly said, we have a lot of opportunities that we can leverage on to change the way we do things. For example, we have completely to change the way we practice our agriculture. We have to do it completely different. We have been used to, let's say, tillage, you know, tilling the farm, uh, plowing the farm. We have to move away from that. We have now to go to conservation agriculture because we want now to con conserve moisture in the soils. And when you, you dig the, the, the land, a moisture evaporates. We have to go in and come up with the new technologies, greenhouse technologies, where we have to grow our crops within a controlled environment. So, yes, we have to completely change the way we do agriculture. And the technologies are there. Okay. The good thing, the technologies are there. And that's why I want to agree with the professors yeah. who, from the audience yeah. who have said that it's important creating awareness of our people at the grassroots letting our young, uh, our young children mm -hmm. understand that climate change is here with us and they learn how to live with it. And it's out of this that the project we are implementing as Council of Governors, the one I said of 7.3 billion, is called Financing Locally-Led Climate Action. Action okay. It is meant to take the technology to the lowest level. Okay. And out the way we have structured it, when we receive the money, it's going to go right to the grassroots at the world level. And as we talk now, already we have received money that we have uh, used to create the initial awareness. Okay. Now the money we are going to receive now, we are going to now elaborate more on the awareness and then come up with the innovative projects, programs that will now change the way we do our activities, whether agriculture or the way we live has to change. We're going to talk about mitigation, um, but first, I'd, I'd like also to hear from Governor Fernandez. Um, how important and crucial for us to survive is uh, adapting and getting to live with this phenomenon? And in your case, in Kakamega County, what have you done for areas that are uh, they are getting people out of forests, right? That's one way of telling them you need to conserve. But from where you sit, what have you done? For example, what are you planning to do, apart from the policy level on the ground? Yeah, I want to just um, agree to a large extent um, with my colleagues. Uh, on the issues of uh, regenerative agriculture, we have actually gone a step further uh, to establish an organic uh, fertilizer factory. Uh, in uh, Mumiasi West sub-county. Uh, this one uh, next year will be distributing organic fertilizer 
uh, to our farmers, which of course will go a long way in addressing issues of uh, synthetic uh, uh, fertilizer. Uh, conservation agriculture is the way to go. Uh, of course, we are also encouraging our farmers through our extension officers uh, to, uh, to grow the drought resistant uh, crops like cassava, potatoes, etc. Because uh, as uh, Governor Otikilo puts it, uh, climate change is here with us to stay. Um, at global level, we are also looking at um, having interventions to uh, protect our Kakamega forest because we must uh, protect our rain, um, our rain for catchment areas. Uh, we have already started uh, fencing the forest. We are now having a program for um, uh, phase two of fencing the forest. As a county, we have allocated 100 million Kenya shillings. I know uh, in April, uh, Governor Otilo and I will be officially commissioning the phase two uh, of um, uh, fencing our Kakamega forest. And just for information, the forest is uh, almost 117 kilometers. We have done 25 kilometers. Uh, phase two will be 35 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are calling upon uh, most of the key stakeholders to support us on the issue of uh, fencing the forest because that will go a long way in addressing encroachment. We are also encouraging our uh, locals, especially those living around the forest, uh, to do um, establishment of tree nurseries, yeah. largely uh, indigenous trees. Okay. Uh, we have also partnered with them to a larger extent uh, just to do surveillance uh, in conjunction with our KFS uh, because we believe that uh, when we have the locals involved, uh, then it will go a long way in supporting our climate uh, action mitigation strategies. Okay. And lastly, our county greening program, uh, we have so far uh, planted one million trees. Every year we have a program of planting trees because it's also important. Uh, besides uh, restoration of the forest, we also need to do afforestation. Okay. Uh, so all those initiatives, I'm very sure, will go a long way in protecting our, our rainfall, our catchment areas, Kakamega Forest, Malava, etc. Thank you. Great. I'd uh, like to speak to uh, my colleague now, um, Alan Ochanda, if he's ready. Alan, there are several questions from the audience. I'd like to deal with the issue of mitigation and funding. Which are these funds? I've heard about uh, World Bank funds, but I want to just to know if there are other available funds, and they, the experts, academia, the governors, and policy, uh, people who write policies for this country, if there are other funds available and if they're digging from it. But before I talk about that, let me take it to Alan. Alan, your turn. Well, Ken, you were talking about uh, the world-based climate uh, committees, and of course they also need funds. Remember that this is quite a complex topic. And uh, the experts here, the men in charge, the men and women in charge, and of course those who this is actually their niche, really shredding it into digestible bits. But uh, you talked about the climate, world-based uh, climate uh, uh, committees, of course, that uh, those are uh, they really carry out according to the governors there. They carry out sensitization at that particular level of the world. But I have uh, some young faces here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Here, of course, we, are, we assume they are students here at Masinde Buliru University of Science and Technology. But uh, this particular topic, you also want to really contribute. If you have a question in relation to what the topic at uh, at hand just tell us your name and uh, uh, just pose your question quite short and precise kindly thank you very much uh, i am moses chimatuni i was a student here under the department of disaster mitigation and sustainable development uh, i think professor mterama is around he taught me pollution chemistry i have a uh, dr mgalavai was the cod by then uh, i have a question uh, to the respectively to the two governors present about uh, what they are doing to ensure that uh, policy brokers are brought in in the issue of formulation of policy as matter of matters of uh, climate change and 
global warming are concerned. Because I understand there are donors that are there funding this uh, debate on uh, climate change. Uh, but there is an issue of uh, how knowledgeable are these people that you have uh, tasked with a mandate uh, in your respective counties uh, to deal with matters, environment, and climate change. Are they really able, are they really tasked? What are the credentials? What are the things that you are using to make sure that these people are uh, knowledgeable about the same? Thank you very much. Nice. Thanks so much. I hope uh, it, uh, we shall be taking uh, from that pool of questions, but also have another gentleman here, maybe just your name uh, shortly, uh, quite uh, short and precise about your question. Thank you. I'm Hiram Nixon, a third year student in the School of Disaster Management. I have a question to our governors. Uh, they are concerned about the land encroachment, how the people are settling the forest, what is your take, and uh, what are you taking to make sure that they are out and where, where will they go? Uh, what my governor, uh, FCPA Baraza, saying that uh, uh, he is encouraging the settlers or the people living around the water encroachment areas to plant uh, trees. Uh, Your Excellency, I would like, as a student from the disaster management, that imply some force, procure some machines, and cut down the eucalyptus trees around the rivers, around the forest, and tell them mambo ni mawili, either they cut themselves or you cut for them. Thank you. So the gentleman just reduced the mambo to mawili from uh, mambo ni matatu, but we go to the final. Uh, uh, gentlemen here, but uh, we shall not be locking out the ladies here because this is actually your international day here. So just prepare a short and precise question kindly. Ndugu, maybe your, quest, your, your name, short and precise question kindly. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Kawesa Byron Otieno uh, in the School of Education. Okay, my question is, one of the mitigation for climate change is reducing carbon emissions. Therefore, charcoal has created more jobs to youths. When they burn them and sell them, they get a profit. This is uh, because of the reluctance of the government to give youths jobs. And uh, with my research, I found that uh, most of our graduates, after they have graduated here, they are advised to do some projects, uh, which uh, casual projects, like uh, the housing project, which they are paid the same amount of money which a class seven dropout is paid. So what is our fate as students? Are we going to do the charcoal burning or what is the plan of government to give us jobs after this? <laughs> That's from a, from a comrade's a point of view here. Quite a controversial question there, but of course it uh, needs some response there from the yeah. men and women there. So, Ken, from that pool of questions, you understand that uh, we are limited of time, and so you Thank may you, Alan. Have I, 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 and we're not going off here, so we'll have all the questions. I see the gentleman right uh, in front here also want to ask questions, but I'll, that's a politically correct question, you know? <laughs> the young people want to know what to do. Do I burn charcoal and get more money? or get paid a little money for that. So uh, the questions were for the two governors, I guess, um, about policy brokers to uh, FCP and uh, also about settlement in forests and what you're doing as you encourage them. And then the last question, perhaps, uh, Governor, you'll give us an answer to that or if you want to also have a view on the other two. Let me begin with uh, Barasa. Uh, first and foremost, I want to um, say that um, as a government, we are trying to create opportunities uh, for the youth, especially employment opportunities. Uh, and because we have um, a very proactive strategy of uh, dealing with uh, climate action, we don't encourage charcoal burning because that one is going against uh, what you are preaching, even right from the world level. And that is why, uh, as, as counties, we are looking at having uh, investment opportunities uh, so that we create employment opportunities uh, for our youth. Uh, when you go to the uh, Kakamega Forest, uh, one thing I want to confirm here is um, by doing the fencing of the forest, what we are trying to do is um, to have a controlled access of the forest. Uh, I know one of the things which uh, we had an issue with uh, the villagers there, especially the women, is uh, the issue of firewood. Because... Um, 
they were asking us what is the alternative that you're going to give us uh, so that we can actually support your initiative. Uh, what we are doing as a county uh, in conjunction with uh, the national government uh, is to promote use of GCOS because uh, the issue of uh, collecting fire with the forest uh, cannot be encouraged because uh, logging cannot be controlled. Uh, we have also employed uh, youth, by the way, just to help us uh, do some bit of marshalling uh, of the uh, forest, especially uh, those guys who do illegal logging uh, of uh, trees in the forest. Uh, in terms of um, uh, educating those champions, uh, part of the funds that we are getting from uh, World Bank, uh, the Flocker funds, is for capacity building. Uh, because uh, these world champions, uh, for them to be uh, trainers of trainers, they need to be capacity built. So uh, the first and foremost uh, initiative which we have done across the board is to make sure that these champions are properly trained so that they can do proper sensitization. Uh, I know Governor Tichilo uh, can add more because he's the champion of environment in COG. Thank you, my, my colleague. I want to add by saying that um, as counties, we are very keen to bring on board highly qualified uh, youth and people who can be able to carry out this very important uh, program, which is going to last for a long time. So I want to confirm that as we um, establish climate change directorates within our counties, we focus on qualification. And I uh, can assure you that um, we have employed uh, some of the most qualified uh, people from our universities who are already within our uh, now establishment. Even here at uh, Masinde Muliro, you will know I have poached a number of your people. They are now, one of them is there, and many others who are now, who have come to work with us. So we are looking for real capacity building and qualification. And I want to thank our universities who are real preparing the youth who should be able to carry out this program. As regards uh, whether we can continue having charcoal, I think technology is changing so fast. And therefore, charcoal is not going to be on the menu of energy, you know, uh, as a source of energy because we have many other sources of energy. Waste management is now becoming a major resource for creation of energy in many forms. So I want to encourage our youth who are already in the university, focus on the latest technologies that are going to revolutionize the way we have been living and the way we are going to live in the future. So the opportunities are there, but we need to prepare for them so that we can be able to implement at the right time. Uh, Dr. perhaps the question that they will be asking, where are these opportunities? Could you, for example, they'll say, could you point us to these opportunities? If we leave the forest and burning charcoal, which is more profitable to them, which you said waste management, but that is just one and not everyone can be involved in that. Yeah, we have, uh, you can be able to have uh, waste management, which has a lot of opportunity. Madam talked about, you know, biodigesters. Mm -hmm. We can now use the waste we have in our, you know, the waste we have in our toilets and so on. We can convert it into energy. And that is going to create uh, employment. Solar energy is something that is now move, uh, coming out very quickly and is going to be actually the, on the menu of energy uh, solutions for many options. Okay. So the chances are there. Okay. And uh, it's just a question of uh, how they come and how they become implemented. And of course, capacity building for them to identify also exactly. these chances. Let me go to Prof now. Prof, I want to talk about the mitigation, and one of the most important aspects of mitigation is the funding. First, the academia, do they also dig 
um, from that port? Do they get something from that port? Do they draw money from that port? And at what level do they get it? And other sources of funds that they can also look at in order to finance climate action? Yeah, uh, thank you for that question. I think uh, the academia plays a big role in this. And uh, I'll, I'll give an example of Masinde Muro University. Um, uh, most of the funds that uh, we get, even as a university, these are very uh, uh, important issue that climate change. Almost 20% goes to this climate change. Eh? And uh, the academia, of course, they get some grants from, research grants from outside. We would like to urge, especially the governors, that uh, this money that is coming, you know, le let me tell you the role of the university clearly so that uh, you, you partner with us. You see, long time when we had these problems of climate, like you said, it is not raining and you know, we had seers, okay? You will go and consult and they tell you, oh, this month, it will, it will be late a bit, eh? don't plan. So the university wants to take that role, whereby it's the university that is going to have a center of information for us, because we have experts. In Masinde Muldero University, we have two groups here, and like I told you, to, to, to do that job. And um, we have what is called information hub. We want to create an in information hub where people can come and find solutions to. You know, you know, you are talking about uh, Kakamega Forest. Do you know we have already, you know, all data from uh, the 80s, how the climate has been around the Kakamega Forest up to now. We have this data. About carbon sequencing, we have the data. The only problem is that uh, trading with the carbon is something that we want to do, but, uh, you know, many people are stakeholders of that Kakamega Forest. Okay. So we want to have a general policy how we can do that and, and extra money. You talk about generating money through uh, carbon credit. But we, we must come together because everybody has a stake in it. We cannot just say Masinde Mdrog is getting billions from uh, alone. Yeah? And so we want to urge everybody that uh, here we, have in, we want to be an information center in climate change. We have that school already. We have experts. And we are saying that uh, you, you, you must involve us in it because uh, this is where you will get experts to tell you exactly how to do it right. Okay. And yeah, and uh, I, something that I must say now is that uh, to mitigate the second category of problem of climate change is to use clean energy. And Masinde Muduro, one of our niche is to start working on creating solar powers. So this is one, one program that we have started. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, so uh, that is one of the things to mitigate uh, the climate The conversation changes. continues. I'm told we'll have to take a short break uh, to allow them to take news. And today we are broadcasting live from Asinde Muliro University. My colleague uh, Dennis Aseto is on the other side. So we take a break to allow them to have news, but the discussion continues here, but they'll come back to us. So we'll still be on air. Right. We take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> 